You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett Land and all of my friends around the world. Ooh, it is a chilly day here in Gwinnett County, y'all. It's 39 degrees, and it's only going to go up to a high of 52. So it's going to be chilly all day. But it's beautiful, beautiful, crisp fall day. Feels like fall for real. Now, is that going to last for the rest of this week? I don't know because, you know, our weather here is so crazy. It'll be it'll be 39 today, and then it'll be 49 tomorrow, and then 72 next week. So we don't know. But right now, 39 degrees going up to a high of 52. So it's beautiful. Feels like a fall day for real to, to the point. Well, I had to actually turn on the heat. I was like, ooh, now if I'm cold, that means it's chilly. Because I don't get, I don't get like, super-duper cold. Like, I sleep with the window open. But the window was open last night. I had to get up and close that mother. Because I was like, ooh, we, I'm cold. And my husband like, you you, you closing the window? Like, yes, because I'm freezing. So I had to close the window. And I turned the heat on turned the heat on this morning, too, because I woke up. I was like, ooh, it's chilly in here. So before I showered, I was like, I need to turn the heat up a little bit. So anyway, it's a beautiful day. Hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I did. I had to, I had a bunch of meetings on Saturday, and then I went to the football game to see my nephew play. He played for Grayson High School, and Grayson High School spanked Hill. I think it was Hill Grove. They spanked Hill Grove. Now, let me tell y'all something about the game. So originally, you know, when the game first started, I was like, oh, boy, this is going to be a game because they were playing dirty. Like, the Hill, I think it's Hill Grove. I think it's Hill Grove. They were playing dirty. Like, they body slammed, like, one of the kids and got a – um. Got a personal foul because, I mean, picked them up and just body slammed. I'm like, what? And so, you know, the parents in the stands went berserk because that was like dirty playing. And then they did some other dirty things. We was like, so I was like, oh, yeah, this this is going to be a game where they fight because they are playing dirty. And, I, you know, our boys weren't playing like that. They were playing football. This, these guys are playing dirty. But guess what happened? They came back and spanked the pants off of them. I guess it's like, yeah, y'all want to play dirty? Play dirty while we win this game. So the game, the, when I left, when the game was over, I think it was like 33 I think they may have scored one touchdown. So I'm going to say 33 to 9 because they had they had three points, and I think they did score one touchdown. So I think the score is like 33 to 9. So Grayson High School spanked Hillgrove, um, beat the snot out of them. Now I heard this coming Saturday or this coming Friday night, that's going to be a game, a real game game. Now here's the thing. It got really cold out there on the field on Saturday. And I had on a sweater – I had on a, a thick sweater, and I had on I had a fleece sweater, a fleece jacket, and I had my umbrella because then it started to rain. So it was cold and rainy, and my daughter was there, and she never wears a coat. Like, she always come out the house with these little tiny, little cute little jackets on, and I said to myself, I know she's freezing, but I couldn't help her because I, I know I'm, got, I'm about to go outside and sit outside, and I'm always checking the weather, as you see me do every morning, checking the weather. This is me all the time because I need to know how to dress. And I, there's nothing I could do for it. So the baby had on a jacket, but the baby's jacket was light. So my brother, who's also a football coach, always has something in his car. And I said to her, why don't you go and see, do, do your uncle have, have anything in his car that he can give you? But she didn't want to do that because she was, you know, she was trying to be cute. So my uncle, uh, my brother went to the car and got another umbrella, gave her an umbrella because she didn't have an umbrella. I'm like, where's your umbrella? Like, it's, it might rain. You the one told me it might rain. She comes with no umbrella. I, I had my umbrella because I'm always trying to be prepared. She didn't have an umbrella. So my brother went to the car, gave her an umbrella, and brought a sweatshirt, a sweatshirt jersey for the baby to put over top of her coat with a hood, which was great. So the, everybody was cool. But anyway, we had a great time at the game on Saturday. Grayson spanked um, Spank Hill Grove. And then my nephew played. He had been out because he had broke his shoulder. He broke his collarbone. And that's like his, I think that's like his third time breaking his collarbone. But he broke his collarbone, so he was out on medical uh, for the last probably six games. So he came back. Yesterday was his day back. He did pretty good. So I was happy to be there. But anyway, I'll be there Friday night. Yes, I will. I'm the football aunt. Like, I've been to pretty much all these kids' games since they were born. And so I like football. But anyway, let's get this train rolling, baby. Today is November the 14th. Listen, we are almost in the middle of this month, running real fast, right into Thanksgiving and then right into Christmas and then right into New Year's. Yes, we are. All right, so it is also National Spicy Guacamole Day. That sounds good. I like guacamole. National Pickle Day. I like pickles. 
National PJ Day. <laughs> I know some people's like, yeah, I would love to stay in my PJs today. I know you would. I know you would, but it's Monday and your day has your week has has just begun. It's National Seatbelt Day. Every day should be seatbelt day. You should wear your seatbelt every day. It's so funny. I gotta tell y'all a quick story. So my uncle, whenever I take him somewhere, he never he 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 doesn't like the seatbelt, right? And he really does not want to wear the seatbelt. So he it's never like crosses his mind pretty much most of the time when he get in the car to put on the seatbelt. Now he is my mother's second youngest brother. Her, her, he's a third youngest sibling, and he's her second youngest brother. But anyway, so, but he's up there. He's up there in age, y'all. And so he gets in the car. It never occurs to him really half the time to put the seatbelt on. So he'll get in the car. He'll do everything except for put the seatbelt on. So before I back out of that driveway, I said, put the seatbelt on. He was like, he was like, no. But he puts it on anyway, right? So yesterday I had to take him to the grocery store. And again, never think to put the seatbelt on because he doesn't like the seatbelt. Like he hates being restrained. So as we were driving, pulling out the driveway, I put the seatbelt on. He said, you never forget to say anything about that seatbelt, do you? I was like, I sure don't. Because I know down here in Georgia, people drive crazy. So you need to be safe, as safe as you can all the time. So putting your seatbelt on is one of the ways to be safe. So he never likes to put that seatbelt on. I always, it's like talking to a little kid, put your seatbelt on. Now, mind you, he's 70 years old, y'all. 70. He might be 68 or 69. He's, he's up there. Anyway, I still have to tell him like a little kid, put your seatbelt on every time. And then, oh, I like, yeah, put that seatbelt on, sir. Don't give me no lip. Like talking to a little kid. All right, let's keep this train rolling. Let's get on with these horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen for today, November the 14th. It is a Monday. I know it is the beginning of your week and you're sad. However, keep it going. You, you'll make it through. All right, we're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Changes regarding your family members will set you off. Competitive games will be to your forte. Problems with female members of your family may plan may play on your emotions. All right, somebody trying to play on you today, Aries. Watch them female family members. They're trying to play on your emotions. They know you're soft. They know you'll give in to the family. Watch yourself. Don't let them do it to you. Don't be listen. Don't be don't be a flunky for them. Watch yourself, Taurus. You would not have the patience to wait for your. Let me see. They would not have the patience to wait for you to complete things that you've been asked to do. Take a different approach. Make make an offer they just can't refuse. Take a close look at any contracts you sign in order to be sure exactly what you where you stand. Now here's the thing, Taurus. If you have signed contracts, look at them very closely before you give them back. If you don't understand what you just signed, then you may need to consult a professional. All right? Because once you put it in black and white, it's a little hard to turn back. I always say that you want to, you want to, you want to not have a real fight on your hand. Put it in black and white. So make sure that whatever you are, you have signed, you understand what it is and what exactly, where exactly you stand. Gemini, it might be, it might be best not to spend your money on luxuries today. You may find yourself in a romantic situation. People who try to persuade you to do things their way will, will annoy you. I know they will. Now, here's the thing. Don't spend money on luxuries today, and you may find yourself in a romantic situation. Is that a one-on-one -on -one romantic situation, or is that a thruple or a triangle? I heard that word. I just had to say it. I heard somebody say that a few months ago. Like, we're in a thruple. I'm like, what, the, what is a thruple? So that's the that's pee -pee, three people in a relationship, and now instead, instead of a couple, they call it a thruple. Well, uh, Gemini, I don't know if you want to be a part of a throuple. So make sure that that's a the couple situation, unless that's what you like. Hey, listen, everybody got their own thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Cancer, you can expect opposition from family as well as colleagues. Someone may be trying to take advantage of you. Be prepared to overcome frustrations and obstacles at work. Okay, watch your back, Cancer. Somebody trying to take advantage of your good nature. Don't let them. Don't let them. You know what I mean? You understand. You know who they are. You know they're trying to take advantage. That's that person that's always trying to do the wrong thing, always trying to get over that person. You know who they are. Don't let them do it to you today. In the meantime, be prepared to overcome frustrations and obstacles at work. You know, I had a conversation with someone recently, and they were saying, you know what? And I always say this. Like, look, and this is what I've learned, because I can't say that I've always been this way. When I had a job... The job used to frustrate me because I just, I, I love the people. I hated being, I personally hated being um, 
in a position where I couldn't move the way I wanted to move. There was no freedom. There, There's no freedom in jobs. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that was a problem. But what I had to learn to do later in life, I had to learn to embrace situations for what they are and make the best of them, even when I, were, even when I weren't happy with them, right? So I was telling somebody, listen, at this point in your, in your life, you cannot afford not to have this job until you find a replacement that's going to replace it with more and better. So in the meantime, figure out how to make it the best situation possible. And that's what they started to do. And it's like, you know what? It's better. Everything is getting better. And and that's what you have to do. Sometimes you just have to figure out how to make the best of a bad situation. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. Leo, you could have a tendency to spend too much on your home or entertainment. Your talents are likely to be discovered. Do not let in-laws upset you. You know, some folks got some ugly in-laws. I wish I had known my in-laws. I knew my, I met my step, my um stepfather. I met my father-in-law. I knew him for a brief time. Then he passed away. Um, I never met my mom, my mother-in-law. She had passed away before I, I married my husband. You know, I always had this idea of what, like what my life would look like when I got married. I kind I'm very family oriented, um, until I'm not, you know, I think for me, I, I, when I got married, I was like, yeah, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have these sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws. And I, I felt like we we're going to be one big happy family. That is not the case. I wish it was the case, but it is, it's not the case. I, I feel like my, my, now I've been, I feel like we're strangers. Like we don't talk, we don't hang out, we don't visit. Like I do visit, like when I go to Jersey, my husband and I will go visit his family. But for the most part, no visit, no nothing. It's just like, we're just strangers. And it's so weird because I just never, I guess for me, I never thought that that, that would be the way it was. But I, what I learned is that when people are not solid in their own family, me going into a family trying to be solid, why would I be solid in the family when they're not solid in their own family? But, you know, you don't know that. You know, you don't know that when you fall in love with that person because you fall in love with that person and they're so wonderful and you think that well, the family has to be wonderful and there's no relationship with the family at all. It's just it's the weirdest thing. And I just, I, I always thought that, now I could tell you, I could, well, that's not true. Well, let me say this. I've been in two relationships where I, I'm pretty sure had I married into those relationships, it would have felt like family. Like we wouldn't have been strangers because one of the, one of them, I'm still in the, in the family to a certain extent to this day, um, where the, to the point where we do talk and visit and all that kind of stuff. And had I married into this other family, um, it would have been the same way because I was like that even when I wasn't. In a, in a relationship, just being friends, I was still a part of the family, and I felt like that would be cool. But my, you know, where I am right now is just not that. So sometimes, you know, you just have to, um, I don't know. I said all that. Say, Leo, don't let your in laws upset you. I wish I had in laws though. That's what I'm saying. I know that was a long story. Virgo, visitors may relieve the tension. Be careful not to get involved in other people's personal affairs. Be aware that minor miracles, minor accidents, or injury may prevail if you are preoccupied. Pay attention is what they're saying, Virgo, today. Watch yourself. Listen, because if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you can run into some injuries or accidents, and you don't want to do that. That could hurt you and other folks. So pay attention. In the meantime, in the meantime, don't get involved in people's business. Mind your business. Stay in your own corner over there. Let them let, let them hash out their stuff by themselves. You don't they, you don't need to get involved, right? Because if, you if you're not involved, when stuff goes down, you know what I really want to say, but this is a family show, at least I try to make it one. When stuff goes down, you don't want to be nowhere a part of that. So just mind your business and stay in your own little corner. All right? All right. All right, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thighs. And stay tuned. Boundaries, 
Girl, you hit too close to the edge now. Only thing they got is toxicity. Think you need a cleanse, feel it. You got the facts, but they ain't got yours. You've done enough, but they still want more. You've been a good friend down to the core. Oh, oh, oh. Hold up, baby, don't take it. In a friendship, if they just fake it. You don't need to put up with their bullshit. Tell them no, no. Kearney bringing you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thompson for today, Monday, November the 14th. We're going to pick it up with Libra. You will inspire confidence in others. You are best to back away from commitment. Take your time and try not to overload yourself. All right, look at you inspiring confidence into others. Listen, you need confidence in life. I don't care what it is you're trying to accomplish. People need confidence. And if you can help somebody be more confident, kudos to you, Libra, for doing that. In the meantime, you're best to back away from commitment. I don't know what kind of commitment that is, but that's what the stars are telling you today. In your mind, you might be saying, thank God somebody said it. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying that's what the stars are saying. Scorpio, avoid any overindulgence. You need to refrain from being the generous one in the group. You can develop your creative talents if you take the time to practice your art. Yeah, Scorpio, let me tell you something. Even if you don't know how to draw a line like me, it's so many ways to be creative out there. I got sucked up in, I mean, this was last night. I kept getting in the bed, getting out the bed, getting, because I'm discovering all these beautiful ways to make all this amazing artwork. And all I need to do is type in some words. Oh my God. The creativity is endless. But in the meantime, Scorpio, you may not be like me. You may have all these beautiful talents yourself that you can just do it just right from talent. Me personally, I had to do it from, well, I guess I, you could call it my talent. I can't draw a straight line for real, y'all. And when I say that, I don't be playing. But now, with all this beautiful artificial intelligence floating around here in the universe, I can make whatever I want to make. And it looks amazing. All right. And I'll get excited about that. Sagittarius. Your emotional responsibility, your emotional relationships will be plentiful if you attend group activities. It's a great day to attend social functions. Fin- finish overdue paperwork and catch up on letter writing and reading. Who writes letters, y'all? Like, do people still write letters? That sounds cool and all, but who actually write a letter? I don't know when the last time I wrote a letter. I think I wrote a letter to my granddaughter when she was born. Yep, I think, and that was three years ago. Because we had, it was a little, it was a little, um, this was before she was born. This was at the baby shower. Everybody had to write a letter to the baby so my daughter could put it in like a time capsule and the baby could read them when she gets older. Yeah, that's when I wrote a letter. In the meantime, listen, you want to have some fun, you want some emotional relationships, you got to get outside of your house, you got to get outside of the office, you got to get from behind the computer, you got to attend some group activities, uh, Sagittarius. Go out to some social functions. If you're looking for an emotional relationship, you got to leave your surroundings. Get out. Capricorn, the battle continues. If you can get away for a vacation, do so. This would not be the day to have minor surgery. Well, here's the thing. Nobody just goes and have minor surgery unplanned. 
So if that person has already had their sur- surgery planned out, I don't think they can back out today, stars. I'm just saying, like, when you have to have any kind of surgery, that has to be planned and scheduled. So I'm not, I don't know what to tell you about that, Capricorn. In the meantime, if you can get away for a vacation, go ahead and do so. Even if, if, even if it's for a short day trip, that could be just as relaxing and refreshing. For real, it can. Aquarius. You can meet an interesting you can meet interesting an interesting individual you'll want to get to know better. A romantic dinner followed by a quiet evening with the one who is enticing you should be most satisfying. Look at you, Aquarius. Be willing to listen, but don't be fooled. Yeah, that part. Yes, that part right there, Aquarius. You can be willing to listen, but don't be fooled. I don't know if they're talking about this romantic dinner you're about to get into. You know, this this um, this interesting person you're about to meet. Yeah, you can listen, but don't be fooled. Don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. Don't be bamboozled. I'm just trying to help you out, Aquarius. I'm just trying to help you out. All right, last but not least, my fellow fish, Pisces. Do your own thing. <laughs> don't we always? I'm just saying. Your flair for the dramatic appeal your flair for dramatic appeal will unleash itself at a social function. Okay. Don't vacillate about asking for assistance if you need it. Alright, here's the thing. Do your own thing, fish. I think that's the way we do our thing anyway. I don't know about y'all, but that's what I I was telling my brother yes no Saturday and look, you know I'm gonna live life the way I want to. You know. I'm gonna do my own thing. I always have. Is it's just who I am. Because that's the only way for me to be happy. Yeah, it's the only way for me to be happy. For me to do my own thing. And so sometimes, you know, people try to bend to what other people want and they live a miserable life, a miserable existence. I'm not doing that. I'm doing what I want to do. You know, I may not be doing it at the scale I would like to, but you best believe I'm working on it. In the meantime, your flair for dramatic appeal will unleash itself at social functions. I don't even, I don't think I have a, a flair for dramatic appeal. I don't even know what that means. Uh, but some of you may. I, I just don't think I have it because I really don't like drama. Um, so I'm not trying to get into any situations where I got to act ugly because I could, but I don't want to. So I try not to put myself in those situations because I know me. Yeah, that's not, it may not be a good look, not for me and the people that's involved. In the meantime, ask for assistance. If you need help, fish, nobody can read your mind. Ask for help. Hey, help me. You know, here's the thing. Some people don't ask for help because they're afraid of rejection. I understand. I used to be the same way, but sometimes you have to ask for help because you can't do it all on your own. Now, you may you may want to think about that for a second, but you may just need some help. You know what I'm saying? You may just need some help and just ask, okay? All right. All right, then. That's all the horoscopes I got for you today. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thyssen. Now, let's get on to some news that you can use. All right, so we made history here in Gwinnett County again. We, you know, we are, we are a very diverse um, community of people from all different backgrounds, culture, and um, nationalities. And so we want to congratulation, we want to congratulate Ruwa Roman. Um, yeah, Ruwa Roman, she she just made history here in Gwinnett County. She made history as the first Muslim, known Muslim woman elected to Georgia House of Representatives and the first Palestinian American elected to any office in the entire state. Yeah. After 10 months of relentless campaigning, the Democrat said she is eager to begin representing the people of the of District 97, which includes Berkeley Lakes and parts of Duluth, Norcross, Peachtree Corners, and Gwinnett County. She says, as an immigrant, the granddaughter of a Palestinian of Palestinian refu- refugees and a Muslim woman who wears a hajib or Islamic headscarf, the road to political office hasn't been easy, especially in the very Christian and conservative South. Girl, don't you know it. I can just imagine what you went through because here I am born here in this Christian South and I can just imagine what you had to go through. But anyway, congratulations. She was the first um, ever. We have a lot of a lot of first here in Gwinnett County. I think she's the first because we honestly have a very diverse population here and we try to make sure that we keep a strong community um, connection with, our, with everybody and, and we want everybody to feel included, you know. I mean, we got some people who... No matter what we do or say, they're never going to change the way they think about things and do things, and we can't we can't help that. But for those of who under for those of us who understand what it means to live amongst each other and try to get along, I mean that's what we do, and we'll be okay as long as we keep doing that because it's, it's probably way more of us than it though than it is of those who don't. So congratulations to her for being the first Palestinian Muslim woman to to hold that seat. I tell you, boy, I tell you, it's interesting. 
All right, the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office hands out food to provide 4,000 families with Thanksgiving meals during the annual giveaway. Let me tell y'all something. I came down Sugarloaf Parkway, and I was like, why is this traffic all backed up like this? It was cars for days. It was so many cars just in the street trying to turn into the fairground, right? I wish I could have gotten out of the car and taken a picture of, like, all the people that were in line. But then when I got to the parking lot area, passing by the area, it was just as, it was like the fairies are all over again because it was cars everywhere in the parking lot. The parking lot was full, and people were just lined. It was, the traffic was backed up all the way almost from the fairgrounds, the first entrance of the fairground, all the way back to Scenic Highway. That's how many, and I was like, what's going on? I thought it was an accident because I forgot they were giving out food. Now, what does that say to me? That say that there are still, there's a lot of need here in our county um, for people who have food insecurities. And so that showed up, you know, at, at the to- at the fairground. And I was like, wow, I, I was just, I was kind of shocked, y'all. I was really shocked to see that many people needing food and the traffic was backed up. But, you know, thank goodness for the sheriff department and everybody who volunteered and showed up to help and 4,000 families are going to eat. So that's a lot. That's a lot of families, y'all. But listen, we have a we are a county of nine hundred and eighty something thousand people. So four thousand, you know, that's that's a lot. But thank God it wasn't more. So kudos to the sheriff department for, you know, passing out food and, and so securing food for over four thousand families. So that's a that's a really good thing. And they gave out everything. They gave out butterball turkeys. You know, it's about to be Thanksgiving next Thursday. is Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving. What what would Thanksgiving be without a turkey and some stuffed in there, some cranberry? You know, down south they say dressing. So when I was when I was a little girl down south, it was dressing. When I moved to Jersey, it was it's called stuffing. So my mother never stuffed the, the bird, so it was still dressing in my house. Um, until I start stopped saying them. They got Cornish in. They had all kind of stuff, y'all. Just just food, like good food, good food, so people can have a really good Thanksgiving dinner. They had hams. They had everything. It was it was really nice. But that traffic was backed up. I thought something was happening bad. I'm like, what in the world is going on? But it was just people getting some food. All right, I'm going to go to a song. I will be back right after that song to bring you more of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So you guys stay tuned. I know that I should keep it cool, babe. Not lose my swag and play the fool.
back, welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, bringing you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. You know, there was a, um, there's a story on the patch, and um, people, this is, oh, okay, let me, let me just breathe for a second. Anyway, there are people who were saying that they think tipping has, is just way too much. They say, they say tipping is out of control. And, and so in my thoughts, like, why would you think tipping is out of control? Like, they, they feel, some people feel like people should not get tipped because they get paid to do their jobs. Okay, so let me just break this down for a second. Let me, let me break down what I think I know about tipping. So, when I was a little girl, my mom worked in a restaurant, worked in like three or four hotels at one time, right? So, she worked in three or four hotels at one time, and I remember... She would go to work from one. She would come home, drop my brother off some food. Now, we ate the best food because she got it from the hotel. We ate the, listen, I was eating like colossal strength when I was a kid. I was eating steak when I was a kid because she would bring us, bring our dinner home. Like I would get from school and nine times out of 10, my brother and I had French fries and hamburgers and French fries and hot dogs because that's what I made, right? And then later on that evening, she would drop off some stuff and then she would go back to work to another hotel. So at some of those hotels, she worked the cash register or she did the wait staff. And so what she would say to us is that they didn't make any money per hour. Like their hourly wage were like pennies. And so they made their, they made their living from tips. Fast forward to, to, to 1999, my friend Georgette and I had launched our business, Big Beautiful Dolls, which was the first, uh, we invented the first plus size fashion doll. And we used to have all our meetings at IHOP. And so that was our place to just go and be creative. We would meet at IHOP in Bloomfield, on Bloomfield Avenue in Bloomfield, New Jersey. And that's where we meet at. There was a young lady, I can't remember her name, but she was always there working. Every time we went, every day we went, she was there. We went there almost every day, y'all, because that was our space. We didn't have an office space. We didn't want to stay home. We would go to IHOP and we would work from a table and we would work in the back, in the corner. So we didn't take up space from, from anybody else. But she was always there working. So one day she was counting her tips. And I think we asked her how much did she make an hour because she made a lot of tips. She said, I average about $150 a day in tips, but my salary is like $2.30 an hour. We were like, what? So we didn't even know that um, the wait staff made such a little bit amount of money. I was like, so that was below the minimum wage. Like, well, why do you, wow, how is that possible? And they said, because... The way that, I guess the way the pay system is set up, they know that people are going to tip you, so they don't pay you the fair wage, the minimum wage. They pay you below that, and they want you to make it up in tips. Now, is that fair? I don't think it's fair, because what happens if you get people like these people who feel like they don't want to tip? So if you get people like them who feel like they don't want to tip, and you don't you don't make any tips, you don't make, you work an eight-hour day to make, to make $16? Because that's pretty much what it equals out to, maybe 18, maybe 20. So you have just put in eight hours of being on your feet and because nobody tipped you, you don't make any money. Now, I feel like the system has been has been um, upgraded since then because I've heard people say, you know, when tips go in, when people tip, it goes into a pool and it gets split, am- a split amongst all of the wait staff. But here's the thing. What happens you got a lazy person on the wait staff? You know what I mean? And that person don't deserve a tip because they are just lazy. They're ducking the tables like that. Per- so it go- it's a lot to go into that. But my thought was this, <clears throat> right? Here's my thought. In my opinion, if tipping during a pandemic is an issue, how about you stay home and don't go out to eat? How about that? That's just my opinion. Because if I'm going to go out to eat and people are going to come out and they're going to be nice to me, they're going to bring my food out and I'm going to enjoy my food and and the people that cooked it because I didn't have to cook that day, I'm going to tip them. I think it's a very selfish person who says tipping is getting out of hand. I, I think that stay home. How about you stay home and don't eat, eat at home. I, I, that's just my opinion. Just like there is their opinion. They feel like, you know, they shouldn't have to tip people because that's their job. Well, you need to do a little research. Another thing that I found out, um, is that when you tip somebody on a credit card, they get taxed on the tip. I didn't know that until to one of the, to one of the wait staff told me, they said, um, cause you know, you put the, you, you get your card, you sign off on it because who carries cash anymore? Um, so you sign off on it and you put the tip on the receipt. Well, one of the wait staff, I forgot where I was at. I put the tip on there and, um, I said something. They said, yeah, we, the tip gets taxed. I said, really? They said, yeah. Like when you put the tip inside the credit card bill, it gets taxed. 
I was like, wow. So now I, I do my best to try to have money in my pocket, which I still don't most of the time, to try, especially when I'm trying to go out, to try to tip in cash so they don't get taxed on that. Because listen, those people work hard, y'all. I, they, I couldn't do that job. My knees and back would be killing me. All the walking and... They yeah they probably in great shape I probably be in better shape, but I just I just I just think it's crazy. So for people to say it's getting out of hand to tip people for doing their job, you might want to look, look do a little research into that because I think that's been a little selfish. And if you want to tip people, stay home and cook. You know, stay home, cook in your own house. You know, you ain't got to tip a soul. Keep the money in the house. Probably gonna save some money anyway. I know I would. However, I'm not staying home. I'm going to stay home when I have to. When I want to go out to eat, I'm going out to eat. I just had to share that because I thought that was pretty selfish. All right, so there's a town hall that's going out that's going to happen this evening. It's, it's talking about safety in our Gwinnett schools. Um, and I think that's really important because we just had a lot going on in the schools, you know, and, and it's, it's frightening. We don't, we don't want to hear about another tragedy like we heard over this weekend where somebody got killed at school. You know, we just don't want to hear that. And so... We've heard there's a young man who got killed by the school. He wasn't in the school, but he was by the school. Um, people have brought guns. People have brought knives and cut people in school. We have we can't do this, y'all. And so the fact that our community is saying, "Look, we need to get together and make this, make this, make the decisions on how we're going to keep everybody safe," the teachers, the students, everybody, everybody that's the, the administrators, everybody. They, we got to figure out how to do this. So anyway, it's the community town hall, and they got commune, and unity is capitalized. Town hall and panels will take place this evening at the Gwinnett Justice and Administration bu- Building, located at 75 Langley Drive in Lawrenceville. It's, this is a student-led, multilingual town hall. It's hosted in strategic collaboration with parents and caregivers, teachers and community organizations, organizers. All of them are coming together to see what we need to do to make sure everybody stays safe. Um, because we don't, I don't, I just, I don't want to hear the tragedies, y'all. I just don't, I don't want to hear it at any school. I don't want to hear, I, it breaks my heart whenever I hear about some, somebody went to a school and killed up some innocent people for no reason. And so, um, tonight it's between, um, from five o'clock to eight o'clock, there's going to be a community town hall. If you want to go, it's open to the public. Um, you can go and you can talk and you can get, you can listen to the panels it's gonna be panel from students, parent from um, panels from um, students from Brookwood High School, Central Gwinnett High School, Charlotte High School, South Gwinnett High School are expected to participate as panelists. Um, parents, teachers, District Attorney Patsy Austin Gatson, um, Gwinnett Public uh, School Superintendent Calvin Watts, and Gwinnett County's public officials are expected to participate in the event as well. So this this event is open to the public. It's going to start at five o'clock. You can you can be a part of that. You can go. Don't go there trying to act stupid, y'all. They don't need that. This is this is this is not for you to get there and invent about you know your children's right. This is for you to go there and talk about how to keep your kids safe. Because I know it's gonna be somebody in the crowd who want to bring up some nonsense that's not a part of what they're trying to accomplish tonight. You stay home. How about that? Don't come there with your nonsense. If you don't have a solution to the problem at hand, the problem that they're meeting for, don't come. Stay home. You stay home. They don't need extra nonsense with you. Because I know somebody's going to show up. I'm coming. I'm going. And, I, and I'll let y'all know tomorrow, did anybody show up with some nonsense that's not on the agenda? You know what I mean? That's not a part of why they're there in the first place. Anyway, 11 organizations and three mental health providers are set to participate in this event. The organizations include the Boys and Girls Club, um, the Gwinnett Chat Outreach, um, Diamond in the Rough, Elite Traveling Tutors, Future Men of Distinction, Georgia Educators for equity and justice, Gwinnett County Government, Gwinnett NAACP, Gwinnett Stop, um, Georgia Youth Justice Coalition, and the Liberation Learning Lab. All of these uh, organizations are going to be a part of that. The mental health providers include Mindful Works Counseling Services, Viewpoint Health, and Hope Anger Management. Um, Public service partners who are helping with the event include um, the, the DA Austin Gatson, um, the Gwinnett County Board of Education Chairwoman Therese Johnson, State Senator Nikki Merritt, Snellville Councilwoman Solange Disdain. Um, sponsors for this event include the African American Culture and Arts Festival, Chick fil A. Chick fil A is always sponsoring something. I see Chick fil A name on everything. 
Gwinnett County Public Schools, Gwinnett NAACP, Gwinnett Stop, Gwinnett Justice Administration Center, Gwinnett Youth Justice Coalition, and Liberation Learning Lab. So if you want to attend this event, again, that's going to be this evening starting at 5 o'clock. It's going to be at the Gwinnett Justice Building located at 75 Langley Drive in Gwinnett and Lawrenceville. So you can attend this event. Um, it's open to the public. If you're not coming to be a part of the solution, uh, please don't come to be a part of the problem. They don't need your problems. They're trying to find solutions to keep our kids safe. So you're not invited if you're not trying to come there with a solution. Not nonsense, a solution, all right? The Lawrenceville Arts Commission is seeking artists to submit designs for the community mural plan for Buford Drive in downtown Lawrenceville. The Arts Commission was founded in 2019. We began our work in 2020 to find ways to, to make art a central part of life in the city of Lawrenceville. Yes, I love it. Um, said Aurora, Aurora Lee, Aurora Lee Sounders, chair and chair, in a statement, the main focus is creative placemaking, where we use art to nurture civic pride and create uplifting, recognizable spaces in the community. Public murals are a great way to do that. And getting residents involved in creating murals is even better. So they're looking for you. If you're an artist, I can't draw a straight line. Now, I can probably create some art, but somebody has to paint it. Yeah, I can go in there and do some digital stuff real cute. Somebody has to put it on the side of the building because I can't do that part. Anyway, the, mur the mural is approximately 250 feet long and has a total of eight, 1,867 square feet. A portion of the mural will be designed to allow community participation in the painting process. Okay, maybe I can, maybe I, maybe I can go and put my little, my little two cents in on the, on the thing. Yeah, maybe I can go put the paintbrush up. Anyway, they're looking for you. Deadline for submissions is... December the 2nd. For more information, you can go to AJC.com. They have an article there for you to take a look at that. All right? Cool, cool, cool. I know. I wish I could draw y'all. That's okay. I'm finding my I find my I'm finding my own artistic voice through artificial intelligence. Yes, I'm a geek. Oh, speaking of geek, let me tell y'all this. I forgot to tell y'all this. Ah, I forgot to tell you. So listen. So Friday, I went to an event um over at Peachtree Corners Atlanta Tech Park. It was called the Tech Summit, and it was really, it was so cool, y'all, because I got a chance to hear about Bitcoin mining. I actually saw what a Bitcoin mining machine actually looked like. It's a computer, and I heard it was very heavy. I also got to hear about water, our water uh, water towers here in Gwinnett County, which everybody's talking about that. And as a matter of fact, the young lady who runs it, she said water is sexy. I thought that was pretty cool. And I also got to learn about the Roaring Pod Project and all the great things that's going to be happening over there on that campus. Um, who else did we hear from? And I got to hear from Miss Robin. God, I forgot her name. I name. I think her name is Benault. She's gonna kill me. Maybe not. She doesn't know me yet, but she will know me because she's gonna know me because I want a I want a one year membership to Atlanta Tech Park, which I'm so excited about that. So excited about that. But anyway, did y'all know that we had Bitcoin mining right here in Norcross? Yes, we have a Bitcoin mining company right here in Norcross called Clean Spark. Now I'm a tech geek. So I was all super duper excited about that. And honestly, the gentleman who runs that, his name is Scott. We could have asked him a million questions, but the other panelists had to have their turn. Scott is the president of the Bitcoin mining uh, company called Clean Spark right here in our backyard. It's, it's Bitcoin mining. And I know people are like, what is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoins are digital currencies that's been around for some time now. They made their big debut back in, I want to say, 2000, maybe 14. Then they blew up in 2017. And now the 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 the, 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 the um the Bitcoin market has been kind of fluctuating back and forth, back and forth. So Bitcoin is like the granddaddy of digital currency, right? And I asked Scott this question because, in my opinion, I need to know this question. I, didn't, I did not know to buy Bitcoin when it was like a penny. I wish I had known because right now your girl be sitting pretty, pretty darn, pretty darn good. But I didn't know. But I did buy some Doge coins. I did buy some Shibu coins. I have all kinds of different coins, which and they're very inexpensive. But I need them to get to the point where they're thirty thousand dollars a coin, like Bitcoin is. And I asked him, "Do you know when that may be? Because that would be good to know." He was like, "I don't. They don't have a clue." And so what he did say was, um, "Bitcoins will be finished being mined." I want to say he said twenty forty. He just said twenty forty or twenty one forty. I think he said twenty forty. Um, they only let a certain amount of Bitcoins out and they're going to be finished mining those Bitcoins. And I want to say he said 2040. And I said to him, do you think that's when, you know, Doge is going to kick off and she, I call it Shibubu, but I think it's Shibu. 
Um, cause I have like millions of shibus. I think I have half a million of Doge coins. Like if it gets, listen, even if it got to a quarter at a half a million, oh, your girl is sitting pretty. If it got to a quarter for, for a shibu at a, I think I got a million seven hundred thousand of those. Oh my God. If it got to a quarter, your girl sitting pretty. So I asked him that he didn't know. But anyway, we have a Bitcoin mining company right here in our backyard. I did not am Norcross. And so the company is called Clean Sparks. And if you want to go and visit them, they give tours. And I'm going to go do a tour because I really want to, I want to understand more about what it is and how it really works. Like he was able to tell us a little bit about it, but, um, but not, you know, not as much as I needed. Cause I had a million questions. I didn't want to keep hogging up the question. I think I asked too. I don't want to keep just asking questions so we can get on with, you know, what we were saying, but I thought that was pretty cool. And another thing, check out Atlanta tech park. If you are thinking about starting um, a tech company, what better place to be than Atlanta Tech Park? It is a it is a hub, it's an incubator, it's a um, accelerator, it's a place for you to hang out and be around like minded people. I can't wait to go there. I had been thinking about, you know, going and and spending some time, and I was like, okay, I need to get out of my house. And so now I know that I have two places. I have two memberships, y'all. I have two free good memberships. And I was like, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful to the, to, to Cornerstone and rest, uh, resto pros for my membership to the Cornerstone over here in Lawrenceville, um, Cornerstone co-working space. I'm grateful for that one. And I'm also grateful to, to partnership Gwinnett and the team over there for a job well done with the, the tech summit that was this past uh, Friday. That was really, really, really nice. And also to, to Atlanta tech park for giving me the opportunity to spend a year with them. Um, learning and being in the company of tech people who who are just making amazing things happen. As you both, as you all know, I have you know my company, um, Pillow Envy, which is an e-commerce business that I'm excited about, and I feel like this is going to be a great place for me to be as I continue to grow Pillow Envy into this major multi-million dollar business. <clears throat> and so, being around people who understand technology and e-commerce and all the things that we do. I'm excited about that. So anyway, check out Clean Spark. They're in Norcross. They are a bit mining company. So if you're thinking about bit mining, uh, Bitcoin mining, I said bit mining, Bitcoin mining, you may just want to check them out um, because they are there um, right in our backyard. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to go to my last song. Then I'm going to come back and give you my word of inspiration for today. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. <laughs> What can I do? You're so loving and gentle to the core. What can I do when you fill me with happiness and much more? What can I do? You're so stunning. I just can't look away. What can I do? I should know by now you make my day. Never more will dreams expire.
inspiration for the day and here goes it says change is the law of life and those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future oh let me say it again change is a law of life and those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future john f kennedy said that and he was absolutely right some of us are focused so much on the past till we are missing out on what could be and some of us are focused so much right now in the present that we're not even trying to plan for the future and i get it i know people said live in the now but here's the thing you want to live in the now but you also want to kind of plan a little bit for the future because some people take live it's, it's kind of like the bible right if you heard pastors some pastors take the bible and they spend it for what they want it to mean right they bend the bible to what they want it to mean people do the same thing about the present right I'm living in the present right now, so I'm going to spend up all my money. What about tomorrow? What about, I get it. You're trying to justify why you want to go out there and spend up all your money, not thinking about the future. Tomorrow is the future. I'm not talking about the future so far away, but you want to use some common sense. Some people just don't, but let me say this. I've always been told common sense is not so common. Don't spend so much time looking behind you. You can't change that. I don't care how, how much you want to try. You cannot change what's behind you. That's why it's behind you. You can you can you can you can craft what's in the present, but don't forget to plan a little bit for the future. Don't spend everything you got right now in this minute. Because you yeah, we don't know if tomorrow's gonna come, but here's the thing, what happens if it does come and you're not prepared? I'm just saying. I get it. You wanna do everything right now today, everything. Me too. I wanna do all twelve of these businesses in my head right now. I want all of them to make a million dollars right now. But is that likely? Nope. It's not. I don't care how much I try to manifest and will it to happen. It's not likely. So some of that stuff has to be planned for the future. And so, yes, don't don't forget to live in the now. But also, don't forget that there could be a future for you. But here's the thing. If you are not prepared for the future, you're going to be left in the past. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. That's all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last 53 minutes with me. And I love and appreciate you for that. Listen, if you miss any episodes of the show, go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there. And be sure to connect with me on social media at Good Morning Gwinnett. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, download the app from the App Store, Good Morning Gwinnett. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m., God willing. You guys stay safe out there. And until next time, my friends, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.